These are the nastiest shears ever sent to us for sharpening. It's corroded. It's rusted. They are covered with some kind of crud. And this gives me a chance to try out a new product. Let's see if it works. So this is one of those, can these shears be saved? Not only are they just rusted, corroded, there's a big old chip at the tip, and they're too loose. And believe it or not, this is what the customer sent them in. I'm covering up her name. But this is what they sent them in without anything packaged. And they thought this was a warranty issue. Well, this is one of the few times we've turned down the warranty. But for $35, I'm going to sharpen them for her, send them back, and they should cut pretty close to new. Let's see if we can do that. This is the Banica Fish Bones. Uh, these are ATS 314, very good steel. Normally it's a 60 degree angle. And these look pretty rough. I want to show you what it looks like before we get into cleaning them. Tips are chipped. They look really corroded really dirty. The customer said, oh, I never cut with them. Well, where did the hair come from? I mean, this is crazy. Before we try out the new product, I'm going to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner because it says make sure they're clean and you have all the oil and anything off. Let's see what the ultrasonic cleaner does. It looks somewhat better. Mm -hmm. The rust isn't gone. We're definitely going to have to use that other rust product, but it definitely looked better. Let's see once they're wiped off. So I've run these to the ultrasonic cleaner and I've cleaned them with alcohol and they look a whole lot better. Still some rust on them. We still have some things we want to take off so we will try this other product. But if even if I didn't have this new product I'm trying, I, I wouldn't be too far from making our customer happy just with this little bit of rust. But let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to give it a real try because it says I can use it in my ultrasonic cleaner and look at all the rust that's in my ultrasonic cleaner. So we'll find out what happens. So here goes. And I'm going to set this on. It said soak them for an hour to 12 hours. Let me just um, set this on the maximum, which is four minutes. And let's see what happens at four minutes. Look at the bath. Look how they're shining. The rust okay, I put my hands in the evapor rust, and I still have my fingers. My nails are a lot cleaner. See, I put my right hand in there and not my left. My nails do look cleaner. However, my copper ring has done some strange things on my hand. So I think I'm going to wash that off. <laughs> look, it's kind of look. I don't think it's good for copper. So. My, my thing is, if you put your hands in it, take off your jewelry, especially if you wear copper rings. But uh, my hands aren't burning or anything. They feel sticky, so I'm going to go wash them afterwards. So I cleaned these first with detergent, an ultrasonic cleaner. Then I used the vapor rust and put them through. It's been eight minutes and the cleaner. And wiped them off, rinsed them with water and then some alcohol. And now I'm ready to sharpen them. If you look at that tip, that looks really, really bad. I may have to just shorten them, but we'll see when we get to that point. But on the whole, it's not too bad. Considering what the shears look like when they came in, there's obviously a nick here, but they've never been sharpened before. And they're, um, the edge hasn't been horribly abused, so let's get started sharpening. Hey, my rod line came up better than I expected, so I might be able to save that tip. So I've set my clamp at 60. I have a worn 1000 grit on a flat plate. And you see how I have it slanted way down? Gently coming in, and I'm going to pull it out a little bit to get to that tip. I have a pretty good burr, just that one pass. I want to do a little bit more up here. 
I'm going to polish them all the way down to the edge where normally I back off. I'm not going to go and remove my burr neck. I'm going to go and polish them, but I want to polish them to the edge because they use, they don't care if these scissors push. These have to be able to razor. So it's a different, and if you sell these shears to anybody, you need to make sure they know that these shears are for slide cutting and razoring, not for straight cutting. Okay. Because they are designed to push hair. They're supposed if you if you cut hair with them, they will push. But a normal shear is not going to razor like these. And they use these. Maria that's going to be at Bronner Brothers this weekend. I know she uses hers all the time for cutting wigs and cutting hair extensions. So I'm going to polish all the way to the edge. So these are the exception to the rule. And you see how I've got them slanted way down here? Yep. And I. Uh, but I have to pull them out a little bit to get to that tip. Mm -hmm. And I might come back and polish it again after I remove the burr, but back off the second time. And I'm at a 60 degree angle. You see how high that is? Yep. You may see other shears that look like these, <clears throat> but unless they're these, or you know, you know the quality of them, if you try to put a 60 degree angle on them, they're going to go dull immediately. So, um, it would be rare to have a shear with a 60 degree angle. And the reason we don't polish all the way to the edge on most shears is because we don't want them to push. But these, if they push, we don't care. And if I have to shorten the tip, I'm going to do it after I've assembled them and put them back together. So you use the um, the cushion? Did you use a flat plate or the cushion? I used plate? a flat plate. Oh, okay. I used a flat plate on them. Feel how sharp those are. Mm. See, yeah. these are raz these are razors to the hair. Now they don't razor like a razor, but they razor sharper than any you know scissors. So they're going to be give you a little bit more texture. And those nicks are gone, but I still got this yeah. bad thing See at the, the tip. Yeah. <clears throat> Do we know what she used these for, or I don't know. Maybe gardening. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's hedge, hedge, trimming. hedge clippers. <laughs> Who knows. And these don't have a clicker plate on them because the, the blades have to come closer together. It, it can't have any, it can't have the give like a regular uh, shear because of the way the blades have to come together. I think this is the first time I've really turned down anything that's come back to me for warranty, I believe. I mean, you know, because we're usually pretty generous about our warranties. Right. And this one was just like, no, no way. And the thing was that she wanted a refund. She didn't want to exchange. I offered her a $35 scissor that wasn't ours in exchange for it. I said, or $35, I'll give you, you know, I'll sharpen them and send them back to you. And she took the latter, which was the smarter thing to do. Unless she tries to use these for hedge clipping again. <laughs> or whatever she did with them. Well, they cut perfect except for the tip. So I'm going to shorten this tip and take it down to where yeah. and the best way to do it's like I showed you earlier I got a little piece of um, paper in here and when it gets to where that pops off I know I've taken off enough and that was just the paper that stuck in there yeah while that's you were it stuck in there while I was playing with it <clears throat> yep this is a fresh 80 I have a worn 100 but I think this fresh 80 is going to do better and I'm going full speed Yep. And I want to wet it because this is where it'll get hot sometimes because okay. I'm just doing the tip. And I'm just going straight in. And then after I get it down beyond where that damage is, then I'll round it off. Do you see it smoking? Yeah. Lose the paper. Yep. Okay, now, so I want to round it off. This is where I do that thing I learned in Germany. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, one, two. Feels and looks pretty good. I mean, I could smooth that off a little bit more at that tip. What you think? I don't know. It doesn't feel bad, though, does no, it? No, it doesn't feel bad. I was just getting a feel That's... for it. So the question is, could these shears be saved? And yes, they could. Watch how these are all razor. What these shears are designed for is for razoring. Watch how they razor. See? And they can also slide cut.
cut. Now they will push hair. Uh, not bad, but they push hair, but they're supposed to because they're designed for razoring, they're designed for slide cutting. So the answer to whether these shears can be saved, yes they can. All I have to do is oil them now, put a bow on them, and send them back to the customer. I think she'll have a hard time recognizing her shear. And I don't think anyone would notice that that tip is just a few millimeters shorter now. Nice work. So, if what I showed you about sharpening this fishbone shear was helpful to you, please subscribe, follow me on YouTube, and visit our website, Benika.com. And I see Tim back here practicing his clipper blade sharpening. Want to say hello, Tim? Hello. <laughs> Anything to tell him about training here? Tell him, don't come, the food's awful here in the South, right? Nope, the food is great, hospitality is great, and the training's great. All right, thank you, Tim. <laughs>